Two months ago, we started working on a very exciting project. It will be a high-speed, high-precision display connected to a time source. Today, I will be working on the decoding module and the most challenging part of this module will be to extract a one PPS signal, which is like one pulse per second signal from the sine wave. Uh, we need to get into 10 microseconds precision. So. so let's have a closer look at the overall project. We are building a display with 14 tubes. Customer will have a time server. It's this box. And this time source will be connected to our display. First, we will need to decode the analog signal to digital form. And then this signal will be sent to the actual Nixie tube driver. So the decoder itself will consist of two parts. One will be analog. This will be preparation of the signal for our use. And the second one will be digital. So the signal will go from the analog part, which is this, to the digital unit, which is here. And once it is processed, it will be sent to driver and this will actually drive the Nixie tubes. But before we actually start with this project today, I need to go and cut some getters because I was just told that the ladies in production are running low getters. In the last video, I mentioned that I want to make it fully operable by other people. And this is the reason I just need to start with something else, but I need to go and do this. So now let's explore the real IREC signal. This is the unit which will produce the IREC signal with the time information for us. It normally connects to GPS with GPS antenna and then provides the signal information. But for now we can work without the antenna because we don't need the precision and we don't need to sync it to the GPS satellite actually. So here this BNC connector is now our source of IREC signal for the testing. The signal what we will receive to our display is called IREC B. So the signal is sine wave with amplitude modulation. It can have either high peaks or low peaks. And today we will focus on how to get a one PPS signal from the analog wave. And we need to detect it precisely with accuracy within 10 microseconds. So to explain better what we are trying to do today, I made two papers, each of them represents one second. Our goal for today will be finding the exact moment when one second ends and the another one begins. So the signal consists of pulses of different lengths. We have two milliseconds long pulse, we have five millisecond long pulse. This is logical one, the short pulse is logical zero and we have 8 milliseconds long pulse. This is called position marker. We have the position marker each 100 milliseconds. So we have 10 position markers in every second. So for this purpose we have two position markers at the beginning of each second. The other markers are always alone, only one marker at a time. But the beginning of the second is marked with two position markers next to each other and the exact moment when the second starts is the rising edge of the second position marker exactly here this is value of low peak this is value of high peak the height of these two lines can be anything between 3 to 1 to 6 
to 1. So the signal can look like this or like this. Like this would be 3 to 1 and this would be 6 to 1. So our system needs to recognize anything between 3 to 1 and 6 to 1 ratio between high peak and low peak. Now another problem, the voltage can be anything between 1 to 30 volts, so the signal can look like this and it also can look like this. Another challenge is position of the signal. In order to work with all the possible systems on the customer side, our Nixie tube display must recognize the IRIC signal in all of these scenarios. So as you can see, it's AC signal, it's going from minus one to plus one volt and we need to prepare it for this unit, which needs voltage from zero to 3.3. And to get the signal to the range where we need it, uh, we have this circuit. Our signal source uses two volts peak to peak signal. So we have our amplification switch set to high amplification, which looks like this. But in case the customer's time source outputs, let's say 20 volts, he will need to compensate this high voltage so he can switch it to low amplification. Another feature is this multi-turn potentiometer. And I can use it to fine tune the amplitude of the signal. So I can decrease it like this and increase it. These two controls, the amplification switch and the amplitude fine-tuning are enough to make sure that our display is capable of reading any IRIC signal according to specification of IRIC signal. So the prototype of signal preprocessor is finished and now we can connect it to the digital part to particle photon. The photon is now connected. So I wrote a code for the photon to scan the sine wave and search for the beginning of the second. So here we can see one position marker, another position marker. This is like eight peaks, eight milliseconds long, the same eight milliseconds long. And the exact moment of the beginning of the second is here. It's the zero position of the sine, sine wave at the rising edge of the first peak. Okay, so the detection works quite well, but now we need to find the difference between our beginning of the second and the actual beginning of the second from the time source. We have a one PPS signal from the time source and we need to find the difference. We need to stay under 10 microseconds. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this blue signal line and I will replace it with the actual one PPS signal from the time source. So here we have first problem. This is the actual beginning, exact beginning what we take from the time source and this 
falling edge is our start of the second. So we can see here it's at least 500 microseconds. This is really not good. So let's let's try to find what's the problem. So the red line is our analog signal and the blue line is the real analog signal from the time source. So as you can see, this is a high peak, high peak, low peak, low peak. So it corresponds to these two high peaks and then these two low peaks. So there is a delay for sure. So let's, let's measure the delay. Okay, so it seems to be a phase shift on the isolation transformer, so I will leave this for Sebastian to solve when he comes from vacation. If we get rid of the phase shift, uh, it's okay. If not, we can compensate for it in the software because it's always constant, so that's, that's quite fine. Let's try to measure the difference between one PPS signal of the time source and wow hours one PPS signal. After removing this phase shift, I wrote down the time between the actual 1 PPS signal and our signal and I found that we are at 14 microseconds. Okay, 14 microseconds, we need to get to 10 microseconds, so there is still a room for improvement. We know what to do for the next video. And here is a small teaser for winter, what I just received. I want to start playing with ultra high vacuum. So we just got residual gas analyzer for one of the machines what I'm planning to build this winter. Thanks for watching and see you at the next video.